Hi everyone, I'm Dan Everson. Welcome to This Week in Anderson on the Big Guy Sports Podcast on USBN Sports. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Steve Ellis. And Steve, yep. our next guest, I'm excited. I, it almost like it, I almost hear the theme to Waltons because, uh, you know, we had Jimmy last week and yeah. we have Tony this week. Yeah. And I'm excited to talk to Tony Diana, who played football and uh, played yeah. baseball at Anderson High School. And we know Tony back in the day Absolutely. playing softball, so it's going to be great to talk to Tony. It's going to be great to talk to him. But first of all, we're going to change the name of this uh, show to this week in some of the states you know because <laughs> all you do is interview uh, some of the states yes. guys well, you it's know unbelievable here, and here's wait, the thing wait, here's wait, the, here's wait, the, wait, wait, wait. what side of summit do you live on now i don't live in some anymore <laughs> i don't live in some anymore i it's it's crazy though but but i will but, tell you here's, here's the thing though so you can get guests too if you want so if you want to get okay. somebody on your side sure you do it sure all right, we'll, we'll do a whole say. show show about air elementary okay let's do it yeah that no happens. no but this next guest uh, danny tony is is one of the better athletes in the early 80s absolutely that's scary yeah, absolutely yeah, but but an even better person no, i'll tell you what yeah and, and we're going to get into that here with tony but uh yeah he just uh, just every time that you and i just from the softball days just yep. oh, had an absolute blast with tony i'm glad that he was a part of this so yeah. as we said is joining us is tony diana tony thanks for joining us oh certainly wouldn't wouldn't be uh would love to be a part of this this is awesome yeah we and tony let, let, let's let's go back to the the, the days uh growing up and of course living on the great side uh summit uh, the That's summit right. side yeah. and uh, talk a little bit uh, about growing up uh, in summit but well, you guys you guys uh, i was in a little different situation than most of the people in summit estates because okay. you know i had older brothers and sisters and i had younger brothers and all of their friends were like my older brothers quinn newhall you guys just right. did his the other day and yep. he talked about brian lawhorn and the preety brother yep. uh dan dan collins i think is what his name was you know all those guys they were my Maynard across the street yeah. they're, they're all older Anderson guys and they were always at our house playing with you know hanging out with my two older brothers and, right. they, and you know Quinn's like a brother to me Quinn, yeah. Quinn's, Quinn's another brother yeah. but we saw them all I was always you know out playing basketball with them or they're you know beating the snot out of me in football <laughs> yeah. or you know yeah. something like that and then we had our group which was like me and Moose and James Brewer across the street yeah. and Kurt Kissinger around the corner um, we had the Thomas boys up the street, Greg yeah. Eubanks, yeah. Um, right up the street. We had Mike Dietrich there, John Burge for the for my two brothers, right around the corner. Uh, I mean, it was uh, we had that. Remember the Hinton family behind the Hintons, us? The yes, Hintons. yes. Um, Jenny Briefeld is like Jenny sister Briefeld, right? Jenny yeah. Arbino now. Yeah, you know, it was it was it was Jeff Harris. Jeff Harris, oh, yeah, right, right down the right street, right down the corner. Street, yeah. me, you know, and yeah. they lived across. Jenny and Jenny and Jeff lived across, and Bill Harris. You know, you, yeah. you see him all the time. Time, you know, and then you're in school with them, and he's like, "I know what you did in the neighborhood." I'm like, <laughs> that's how'd, tough. You, "How'd you hear Jerry Wolf around the corner?" Jerry that's Wolf. right, yeah, that's right. Garby. So Julie, uh, Julie Seymour, Darla Ray. Yes, you know, God, um, throwing out um, the, the bringing out everybody. Yeah, you know, Summit. Uh, you know, it was it was a great Julie Cardarelli. It was awesome. Brad yeah. Ellis. You know, we we had a great time yeah. in some of the states, and half of them were down at Summit Swim Club where we all were also, and then. You you know, we'd go on the other side of Summit, and you had the Burdicks, and you had Rock Legaman, and you know, you yeah. had the o the O'Brien family. You got the Christians. The Hubers were on your side. The Hubers were on your side. Hubers were on Rockhurst, and so yeah. were the O'Rourke's. Yeah, and Brian Larson and Mike. Yeah. Um, Oh, what was Mike's last name? Michael Bryan. Yeah. You know, right there. And the Kelly girls, you know, um, uh, Maria Kelly. Yeah. They, they oh, yeah. Right on the corner of yep. Bethany and Rockhurst also. They all lived right in there. So yep. at any point in time, you can find somebody to hang out with. Yeah. Or do something in incorrect with. Well, or do yeah. something really good with. Well, back when everybody was outside doing stuff. Yeah, we were always outside. I Playing, mean, doing something. Yeah. Me and my two older brothers, we'd go down to Summit Swim Club early in the morning in the summer, and we'd do our swim, our laps for swim and everything like that at 6.30, 7 o'clock, whatever it was. We'd come home and we'd cut the grass and do our chores and, you know, do whatever. And then we'd be gone all day. Right. You know, we'd be, you grab your bike and you run over to Jules Field and play sure. baseball. You ride up to Summit Estates in the wintertime. You, you, you walk up to, to Summit Elementary and slide down the back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then we had, you know, the Jim and John's friends that were always around too. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I got my butt kicked by the older boys. I well, got I, kicked their butt. Well, I was getting ready, I was getting ready to ask you. I was getting ready to say, please tell me you beat the crap out of Jim and John. Please tell oh, me you yeah. did. That. I mean, I just brutalized them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, but the, the bad part is, is, is 
my sister, who's who's the oldest one, is absolutely love her to death, love her to death. But we just terrorized her. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, you know, five I, boys, five boys behind one girl. her. You know, one yeah. girl. My brother Rick and her just just went just at it. Went at. I mean, just terrible stuff. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Brutal stuff. So let's get in growing up in around some of the states, but actually on youth teams. What sports did you play? I played baseball at um, uh, Mr. Kogan on the Summit Tig Summit Tigers. Okay, uh, you're actually you know. Um, yeah, remember that was 1973. So we had cotton uniforms and yeah, oh yeah. heat of summer. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. they're all I remember that. up. They're sure. sweet, man. You know, yeah. I started out hitting left-handed, and I got a couple base hits. And then he said, "Why don't you hit right-handed?" I said, "I don't know." Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went over right-handed, got a couple base hits, and we were good to go. You yeah. know, so, <laughs> you know, nice. it was fun. But you know, the, the team that you had to beat, the one team you had to beat though, was Mike Albers in Connecticut General. Is that right, sir? CG. Was, yes. Yeah, and then and then it came, you know, new sash, new sash. Yeah. And, and, then, <laughs> well, and then you know the Midlands were coming up then yep, too and yep. everything. But new sash and Connecticut General, Connecticut and, General, and, and, uh, Rocky Legman and Butch Doman, and yeah. uh, remember all those guys were on that yeah. team. That was a and good your team. Brother, your, yeah. yeah, your dad coached. Yes, your dad big and, guy. And didn't uh, um, uh, uh, who the was commissioner? Uh, oh no, it was Harold. Uh, Harold. Uh, oh God, I can't think of his last name. Jim Harold or something like that yeah. or something. Yeah, he helps with my dad. So. Yeah. Kenny yeah. Harold's Kenny, dad. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny Harold's dad. dad. Yeah. And then you know, you down around the corner from you, you had Scott Barry. Scott and I played yeah. soccer for years together, and you know, and it was it was just a great place to grow up as some of the states. So you played baseball, and then you're saying you played soccer too. I played soccer when I was really young. Okay. Um, I played for uh, the Eubanks, and you know, um, I, I, I'll tell you what. One time we had Kenny and. In um, in uh, Nabs, the Nab Boys, on the ends, we had Frank Brandy in the middle. We had Mike Newton in the goal. We had John Metter behind me. I was a wing. Your brother was on the team. I mean, we we had some battles. We Wait went to City Round Robins. You're telling me Frank Brandy played soccer? Oh yeah! Wow, He's darn good. Didn't Man, know that. Just was it was it that you guys had yellow dwelling, uniform, yellow dwellings? Dwellings. dwellings. That's right. Ye yellow <laughs> uniforms. <laughs> yes, I remember that. You know, dwelling. You remember the old dwelling yeah. yes. uh, realtors? Yes, dwelling yes, realtors. We were the dwelling <laughs> hornets. You know? That's crazy. Um, it, I mean, there were some. We had some pretty darn impressive teams. And Newton, you know, Mike Newton was like a man oh, yeah. when we were five years yeah. old. I mean, he was he was a stud, and so was John Metter, and he could just he could fly. He just put the ball over the top, sit back and watch, see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Um, but you know, we ran into we would always end up playing the Kelly boys. You know, Sean and. And I don't know if you remember Steve, Steve Jarvie. Yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve oh, yeah. Jarvie was on yeah, that team. Steve Jarvie. He, he was, was, uh, he was always, a basketball player. Oh, he was a heck of a basketball player. Yeah. yeah. For a matter of fact, he left and Mike Wan came in. You know, it was awesome to yeah. have. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Steve Jarvie. So Steve yeah. left, I think. I think After eighth grade freshman, or freshman year. Freshman year. Freshman year. Where'd he go? He moved. He, his dad Texas was a and er and he moved south, I think it was, in Texas. I think he did go on to play like Division One. I think he did. I think he went. I'll tell, awesome was good. When you leave yeah. I'll tell you what he was good at. I thought was baseball for for some reason. I thought he was a heck of a baseball player. Okay, so, God, I remember um, him. I remember that guy. He was he was pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. So before we get into the, the football days, at Anderson, I want to talk about baseball. Yeah. And so I'm trying to remember um, when you were at Anderson. Was Lynn Moore the coach all four years you were there? I don't believe so. I think it was he's maybe still, junior and senior. Junior senior. So Bowman I, was before. Uh, I had Bowman my freshman year. Uh, he was the varsity coach, and Hannigan was my coach, I believe. The JV. JV. Right. Um, junior, sophomore year, I believe, Bowman was gone, and Hannigan or Heimball, one of them. I know they both, they both kind of were in that realm. And then also, Lynn Moore was either junior and senior or just senior year. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and and you know, Lynn Moore, Lynn Moore was the one. I mean, we always we always got good instruction, especially from Chuck Bowman. And Chuck Chuck never never yelled. He would just talk to you like, "Listen, son, here's a situation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got two things. Either you can do things this way, right. or, or I got a seat next to me. Yeah, which is a whole different view of the game. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had Lynn Moore, who could really teach the game of baseball because he had a passion for it. Right. You know, so we got, you know, we had a chance to have some, had some really good coaches. And then I played Midland ball in high school with, it was me and Randy Corbett and Bill O'Donnell and, and, um, to, uh, gosh darn, who else was on that team? I mean, there were a ton of us. And, um, 
Steve Caruso thumbs. Steve Caruso. You know, Caruso was on that team. And we had a guy by the name of Dickie Von Bokern as our coach. Von and Bokern. Dickie, I don't know that. Yeah. Dickie was a, a freaking awesome coach. Uh, I, yeah. I remember yeah. him. Dickie was a great well, what, coach. What about some of the other players on your teams at Anderson Junior Senior? Wasn't was Craig Bosey on that team? We had Bosey. We had um, we had Ty Burdick, um, Tom Corona, Skylab. You know, Tom, Tom Corona. Corona. Yeah, yeah. Played first yeah we had uh, Hornschmeyer. Kenny Hornschmeyer was behind yeah. the plate. Yeah. Butch yeah. Doman. Yep. Uh, Mike Wan, Moose, uh, Charlie Lackmeyer. Lawrence uh, Coas. I Lawrence think Coas was yeah, on was that team pitcher. for for, yeah. for yeah for a few years with us. Dean Tidball. Dean can hit the snot of a baseball. Yeah, but yeah. Um, good lord, there's so many of them. Um, James Brewer played. Masterson. Um, Whitey, Whitey Masterson. Whitey. Yeah, yeah, good Whitey call. Masterson. Yeah. You know the guy six one, 110 pounds, and can soaking hit the ball. wet. <laughs> yeah, get baseballs in his pocket, and he can hit the ball 300 feet. Yeah, you know, sneezing. Wow. Um, you know, so we had some pretty good teams, and then you had the ultimate. You had the you had the, the kid who I swear every time I had to catch him, he broke my hand. But um, Jerry Wolf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Jerry would throw a knuckleball that didn't rotate, and you're sitting there going, Yeah. So is that you, you? You were a catcher. I did both. I caught a little bit. Played, played third, third base yeah, a little bit. Played left third. field. I played mostly left field, but I would catch everyone. I'd give Hornschmeyer a little. Yeah. Butch Doman would catch a little bit. He played third. I played uh, third if he caught. And you know okay. we, we rotated some things. I think right. I remember you. I wasn't that. I, I wasn't that good. I, I remember you more at third than. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I remember you catching a little bit, but I, I didn't I, catch a whole yeah. bunch. I just kind of filled in. Yeah. Wasn't there a Fritz on the team? Too? Fritz Binky. Yeah. Fritz Binky, my Fritz cousin. Binky, his yeah. cousin, big Fritz. He yeah. was. He big was Fritz in his blue Camaro. Yeah, he <laughs> was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. You would say that the car guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fritz, yeah. Fritz. Yeah. big Fritz. Yeah, yeah. He's Fritz. Good dude out in Jer on Jersey now. Is that where he's at? Yeah, and him and. James Brewer. Brewer lived across the Brewers lived across the street from me. Him and James are really good that's friends. How, yeah. and that's how I knew. That's how I got the. You know who play. I remember him dating was uh, Susie Walters. Susie Walters. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's who I remember him dating. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. Yeah. But speaking of Lynn Moore. Yeah. You yeah. want to go speaking back of Lynn to this? Moore? Did, yeah. I love. I'm, I'm just in love with Molly Moore. I'm, oh, you remember that, don't you? Yeah, you were how much I was just like I it just when she walked, I'd be you're like freshman drooling. You'd be <laughs> she, drooling. She'd be all over the house. And <laughs> Danny would just get to a stop. I could move like, see, yeah i was yeah you know did you ever see uh the big bang theory yeah. <laughs> did you ever see raj when he has to talk to a girl it's just like cliff clavin maybe <laughs> see cliff clavin <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of walk by going, oh I, god I, I that's, yeah. that's great I it's dance. the truth it's the truth <laughs> well tony let's let's get into let's get into football you're captain of the football team played linebacker nice uh you played for uh coach stowe i love i love playing for coach so, um, you know, he just had that, unfortunately, that Big Ten mentality, which you couldn't have at Anderson. It was the run, well, right? Tough. You know, the power of this, power of that. We just we just didn't have the, you know, couldn't couldn't do that. But talk a little bit about playing uh, for Coach Stowe. Coach Stowe and I had a great relationship, um, especially my senior year, because I would leave study halls and say, I got to go do things in the football office. And Mr. Wolf would always just kind of, yeah, go ahead. You know, yeah. And uh, I'd go down there and I would watch film and eat butter scotch <laughs> he had that 90 pound yeah. box of butterscotch yeah. that he that the, i think the school bought him every year just to keep him calm yeah um he was a great great practice coach he yeah. could teach you anything we had you know chuck bowman and, and letter b and um we called them the, the twins erdman and ellis and yeah. um neither one of them were five six but, uh, right you know i have heard that funny story <laughs> they have a short meeting after right that was, that was hilarious. <laughs> when, I, when i heard that the other day i laughed like <laughs> um, john stowe was was a very good teacher right. and he was a he was a good practice coach um i thought he went on tilt everyone and his mm -hmm. his words go on tilt and went on tilt every once in a while during games um after mcnick uh we we i think we got our brains beat in by McNick our senior year, and I think they went on to do really well. Um, and I'm really good friends with a lot of those guys, even though they tried to kill me that night. <laughs> um, John Stowe came to me, and he says, listen, he goes, I'm going to trust you with something. And, you know, at the time, 17, 18 years old, yep. uh, probably in my 10th year playing football, he looks at me and he says, if you don't like something I call on defense, just call whatever you want. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how many times I blitzed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many times I brought like Scott Omis <laughs> off the end, or I had um, in my football days, I, I had a I had a great opportunity uh, to play behind Danny Simmons. Um, Danny is country strong, still yeah. is, um, and he would grab like three and four people in the backfield until the guy with the ball bounced and tripped over me. Right. Or, you know, where they tried to run around Danny or ran, run away from Danny, and Matt Kelly would track him down with his speed right. and yeah. bring down the tackle. And, yeah. and Tim Shields and, and Butch Doman and Eddie Paxton, they all had speed. So my greatest asset was, number one, I couldn't read to save my shorts, but I could stay <laughs> home and let whatever Danny does up there, right. eventually the guy with the ball is going to squirt out. Right. You know, if he right. doesn't bring all of them down, Danny. Right. So, you know, anything that I did in football, I got to tribute to Danny. Danny Simmons. Yeah, but I, I believe that, though, that, that you were probably like, you know, a lot of people say a coach on the court. You were a coach in the field. Right. I tried to be. Yeah. I tried to be. I, I learned see the that. game. You know, growing up, I tried to learn the game. That was one thing I always tried to do. Uh, you know, I was never, you know, the best athlete on the field ever, but I tried to learn the game. Yeah. Uh, whether it be baseball or, or, you know, even in soccer, the, the little time I played soccer and mm -hmm. football, I just tried to learn the game. Yeah. And, you know, if I could help somebody that way, I would, because uh, believe me, I was never the best athlete on the field. I was like, well, you were damn good. You were damn was, good linebacker. I, I remember. Second, I was second you tier. were really, really, really good. I remember the big old pads you had on your arms. I remember. And the pants. Number, number 50. Number 50, right? Number 50 or 52? 50. 50. 50, I remember. I was 60, oh. 63 my freshman year, and then I took 66 for Bill Berge. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Glenn Cameron, 50. Yeah. But I always, my favorite was always Dick Butkus because, Hell just, yeah. you know, that you, that kid can play without a helmet. Yeah. Well, so much that, <laughs> what did you end up doing years later? What about that name? Butkus? Well, I had a dog that I named Butkus. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I remember that. You had a Chicago Bears 50. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> 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 I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so talking about your, your playing days, how unbelievable was it to watch Sean Burdick as a punter getting all, like just he was all everything, all state, all everything, to watch Sean. But not only was he a good punter, but he was a hell of a receiver too. Oh, yeah. You know, what is he, 6'13 and a half? I don't know. But he can jump out of the gym. He was a basketball player. So yeah. throw the football up. Mike Wan had a great target. Throw the football up. Yeah. yeah. And when they double teamed him, you know, you had Mike Andrews. You had Butch Doman out of the backfield. You had Timmy Shields running, you know, we had there's just so many um, what's his name, uh, King um, Oh, uh, uh, Jeff King? Je no, uh. um, you know they, I mean, the group behind us they, you know, they, they were gr they were good wide receivers, they were more skill players than we were, yeah. we were a bunch of grunts you know, yeah, I think Scott Omis in the middle maybe Chris Leinberger and Kurt Kissinger um, Dan Simmons on occasion, but it was Doug Wise and Brian were Willie were the tackles, and then Danny Simmons was our tight end. Wow. Um, you know, That's and then crazy. Tim Shields, Butch Doman, Eddie Paxton in the backfield, yeah. Mike Wan in the backfield, and then you got the guy who can Sean, run, yeah. and, and, and a guy over here that can run with yeah. with Burdick and Andrews and Terry Brennan. Terry you know. Brennan. Wow. Hey, Terry Brennan, you know, I've never seen a guy work so hard in my life come off the field just you spent 100% and still look as good as Terry <laughs> <laughs> nice hair. You always had nice hair. It was perfect. Always nice it, was hair. Like, it was like a bad, you know, yeah. bad uh, uh, soap commercial. <laughs> <laughs> In slow motion. I mean, yes. He just looked perfect. I, well, I remember Sean's punts. I mean, cause I, at that age, I'm thinking, that's unbelievable how far how high, how how high, high they were. I don't remember who, I don't remember who the, um, who the um, receiver was, who the punt receiver was for Turpin when we played Turpin our senior year. But I still think he he sees some of those in his sleep because yeah. he, could, he couldn't catch him. Yeah. Couldn't catch him. You know, he couldn't catch him. And, and when Burdick, I think Burdick kicked a, a, I don't know, 35 yard field goal in, you know, winning that game. Yeah, well, that's what I was getting ready to yeah. ask. Yeah. It was yeah. three to nothing was the so, final, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I mean, it was Burdick, like, uh, Burdick yeah. put this thing, I mean, he had another 25, 30 yards to go yeah. when he kicked it through Just the upgrades. Incredible. It was, I think it went over the fence and down the hill. Uh, yeah. But yeah, whoever that whoever that punt receiver was for Turpin, <laughs> so, he couldn't catch a dart. Yeah. So what was your record your senior year? I think it was six and four but don't quote me on that maybe five and five six and four well but in those days that's pretty pretty darn good yeah we had a good group in front of us and then us and then a good group behind yeah. us so we had th 
three really good, you know, we kind of had three really good good teams. So we've said this in a lot of these podcasts, for, you know, for the time frame, that era um, is about, you know, all the great athletes oh, that, yeah. that played. And oh, sure. you can say the ifs and buts and all that stuff, but you wonder, like, okay, so if you had, like, the weight room facilities that they have now, you know, oh, what man. difference that would have oh, made yeah, for you difference. and for everybody. And, oh, huge difference. You know, the, just the field. You know, had, the crown field. We had the, we had the closet across. <laughs> right. Across the from the, you know, yeah. We had, I think, at that time, we had a, a, an inclined bench, a regular bench, about three curl bars, yeah. and, you know, 250 pounds for everybody to share. Right. right. And then we had that thruster in the in the trainer's room. The, the leaper. You know, the leaper, yeah. whatever it is. You crank it down and yeah. you try to power it up. You yeah. Know, so you, you wrench your back yeah. and, and snap <laughs> your neck trying to get right. it up. Yeah, spine and, issues. And then you, yeah. you know, you walk, you get off of it and you're hunched over for like the first 15 <laughs> steps. And, you know. Oh, this is great. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, and then you go, went downstairs to the west wrestling room and I think we had maybe one or two squat, you know, squat machines. Yeah. That, okay. that was about it. Yeah, yeah there wasn't I mean, much. That was really it. There wasn't much know, at my all. my senior year and some yeah. of that stuff was new my senior year. Yeah. You just wonder, you know, oh, what, yeah. what, what we could have done. How yeah. could have it yeah. would have been and, yeah. you know, it's just amazing. Oh, sure. And, you know, the stuff they have now, I mean, their weight room is larger than our locker room. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. no question. Yeah, there's no doubt about you know, it. All, I can't believe that we all fit in that locker room. I can't. Yeah. I mean, that's basketball. We and it football. was skinny lockers, too. Yeah, yeah they were uh, tiny lockers. Yeah. I mean, it was, and it was, it was tight in there. But and it smelled. It was oh, terrible. Oh, yeah. It was awful. Yeah, it, it was awful. Yeah. It was awful. <laughs> so, so let's, let's uh, you, you and I also, uh, you coached football at Anderson. Mm-hmm. You and I uh, got to coach together, coached the freshmen, and we coached under uh, Coach Soriano. And I really thought I knew football, and I didn't know crap about football until I coached with Soriano. Talk about that. I mean, well, first of all, talk about Coach Soriano and talk about I, my experience with you coaching football was just one of the best uh, times I had in my life. It was so much fun, and we had a good group. Oh, we had a really good group. Uh, you know, I, I, got, I was fortunate enough to follow that group all the way through. Vince, Vince says, I want you to take that group. Yeah. And, you know, when we were finished our freshman year, he said, I want you to be the JV coach yeah. and follow this group and bring them all the way up to seniors, and I was more than happy to do that. Um, Vince, um, Vince was like a god the first time that we sat down and started talking football because mm-hmm. he was talking a whole different language <laughs> than mm-hmm. me. Big time. You know, I was I was a garden linebacker, you know, and he's talking, you know, blocking techniques. We just hit the guy across. <laughs> right. You know, exactly. you're going to block back. That right. means that means I'm going to block this way. Right. And if the guy's there, you know, great, I'm going to knock him out. If not, if he's gone, I got to look for somebody else. And that was yeah. our blocking schemes. I mean, we had some we had some traps and some pools and some some G blocks and things like that, but you know, when when Vince started talking and you know, the very first thing we learned from Vince was terminology. Oh, I mean, yeah. He started with us like, "Gentlemen, this is a football <laughs> and this is the object of the game, okay? And and then he, you know, and then he went into the terminology. That, I mean, that's how he really taught us coaches. Yeah. And then he held a clinic by himself for all of us new coaches. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. We were down there um, where the old batting cage was yeah. behind the school, yeah. and we were in there working – you know, blocking techniques and trapping techniques and footwork. You know, he, he was the first one that ever introduced me to the footwork is probably one of the most important things in football because if you don't time up with your footwork, that means you don't time up with somebody else. Yeah. If your footwork isn't perfect and your handoff to the running back, his footwork is, yeah. you're not going to time up. You know, you have to have so many steps that you've got to get rid of the ball. You have to have, you know, when, when, we, were, when we were teaching the guard, um, your first open up and punch, you know, you don't just run after the guy and try to block him. You actually have a six foot punch step to get your legs and your butt underneath him, and then you come in and attack with the hands and the arms. Right. And then, you know, he taught us the whole reason we never knew why we were benching. Okay. I want to bench because yeah. I want to lift All weights right. and I want to be able to. No, you bench so you can bench somebody off of you when you're playing defense and lock out and be able to move that guy as much as you can. Yeah. It's the same motion. So he never did it. 
he, he never did a drill that didn't teach you something, that yeah. didn't get you in the right position to do something. Just I mean, he was, oh, yeah. I mean, well, think about that. The one, the one that blew me away, Steve, was um, he made these shoots. Um, and so you start off, and the shoots were so low. Yeah. So you'd be down, and you're going to go under, and you're coming up. Okay. So it would force you to stop. It, the, the, the thing would be high. Yeah. And you're, and you're coming, and then it's forcing you when you're coming, you're coming down, and you're coming up. Okay. You know what I mean? And, we, and it was just like, you, I was like, holy yeah, crap. Yeah, we used, to, we used yeah. to use them for tackling drills because you got to start out low, and then you and then you pop through the guy. We yeah. used to use them for offensive line. Remember, we yeah. used to put them on the boards. We'd put yeah. the boards underneath them, and it would teach the offense in a three-point stand. How to fire out low, stay low in their first punch step and their cross step. Yeah. He used to call it the power step, punch step, power step, drive. Um, but it would teach you how. I mean, everything he yeah. did it was, had a reason. And it a had reason. a reason. It cut you still, but he did it in progression. Too. Yeah. He imagined you know, back then just having some film of that of him teaching. No, it's it's, oh, a, it's amazing. Know, yeah, it's I mean, it's just, just a, obviously how far it's come. Right. I yeah. can sit and watch a football game, and, and my family kind of hates it. And uh, but I can sit and watch a football game and know that because this guy did this this is what happened and who came through the other end just by watching the whole game and I learned yeah. that from Vince you know if, if I'm an offensive lineman I yell at the Bengals all the time sorry Duke I yell at the Bengals all the time <laughs> because we have a center who takes such a big step and chases a guy out of his zone and then they run a linebacker right, through yeah, you know yeah. and, I, and you <laughs> see that clear as day when you've coached with Vince or yeah you know, you see a, a tandem block where a guard and a center come down and, and the nose tackle or the, the down tackle, the three technique comes across the center while the guard immediately looks for the linebacker coming through. Yeah. So you see stuff like that. And, and besides that, you, you I never saw that before until right. I started coaching. Isn't that amazing how no, you so see that stuff? Yeah, you, and just, and you, just, you can he, see it from 100 miles away. <laughs> I, I, was, I was probably the worst football coach in Anderson High School history because I did not we go scout I had no idea what I was scouting. <laughs> what you're looking at I'm serious yeah he's like damn what linebacker do oh he's fast I mean I like yeah I, did, I mean I didn't know like did he go in this yeah. one did he go in that home like yeah. I don't know so when we first when we first started scouting when we first started doing this uh, Vince and I became really really close the years that I was coaching because we were always together yeah um, you know I was a young kid I was three I years out of high school I always saw you guys together you know we were always we were always doing something yep. and, um, and you know Vince taught me how to put the scouting report together and he taught me what to watch when we were going to games yeah. to scout and then you know we would get the films and we and he'd have us write and drawing every play up not okay. just writing yeah. down what they and ran grading, down, but grading. drawing every play he wanted to know what numbers were on the line what numbers were on the defensive line he yeah. wanted us he wanted all the information that he could and then we would go in and we would put that in a um we would put that in the scouting report but before that you know you play on friday night and vince and i would kind of hang out and, and he'd go home and look at the film i know he did oh, of course he did um and then we'd be in there at 5 36 o'clock saturday morning you know i'd go pick him up and uh and we'd run through mcdonald's or something like that and we'd be in there bright and early in the morning and we would we would go through the film before all the other coaches did, so we can at least have an idea, you know, the other team's film who are yeah. playing the next week, so we so he could have an idea. And then we end up getting really technical, and we're able to start using computer systems to start doing the scouting report. And okay. moving, you know, I still have all my little templates and everything yeah. like that. I still have everything that I coached with, yeah. with Vince sit, sitting in my basement. So, what transpired that that got you out of coaching at the time? Um, work, work, yeah, really okay. work. It just you didn't know. time up, and yeah, it just didn't because it was up. a big was commitment. A, obviously, it was a huge, it was a huge commitment, commitment around yeah. Vince. We, I mean, would go, and we would go, you know, any any free week that we had in the summertime or weekend in the summertime, Vince had connections all over the colleges. We would, we'd get in the car and we'd go somewhere and learn offenses and defenses. Unbelievable. You know, and, wow. you know, and, and it was just, it was awesome. And he, you know, one of the greatest things about him is he was very patient and teaching us. Exactly. Coaches. 
um, and and he would always, you know, call a kid off the field or something like that, and go go see Coach Diana. And before he ever called that kid off the field, he would tell me exactly what he wanted him to say because he's still watching practice. Right. He's still doing things, or he would tell one of the other coaches. You sure. Know, I want I want Bobby to be doing this. Right. And he's doing this right now. Let's see what we can do to get him to that point. You know. Uh-huh. And as he does it, I mean, he could see every little step and every little thing and every. Um, you know, it, it, was, it would drive me nuts because I'm looking for it. Right. right. And he's seeing it and everything. <laughs> going, I quit. <laughs> was there a time, Tony, in like the first year or so that you saw, I mean, obviously not the, just the knowledge of, of Vince, but just that you knew that this thing was going to. Oh, yeah. Easily. Easily. He had so much passion. Yeah. And it didn't matter what school he was at. He had passion for that school. When he was a caddis, he had passion for sure. caddis. When he was fairy, he had passion for fairy, especially because that's where he went that way and he taught that way you know I always I always thought he was one of my best teachers ever okay um, only because he was always in the moment he always he always he was always doing something to teach something yeah you know um, and it was he just a, a great guy well you know it was kind of cool too is we uh, when we were coaching freshmen we coached against Brad Brad was coaching Glenn yeah. oh yeah at the the time we were Brad coaching, coaching and, and, and one thing Tony I don't know if you remember this or not there was a, a, we were playing Glenn Estee and it was a little skirmish and Brad Brad went not on us on his pl- went bonkers on, on that player, and yeah. he pulled his players over he says I know those these are fr-. like I remember Brad like distinctly yeah. taking these kids off to the side and saying this is not going to happen it ain't going to happen is it's not right? going to happen here and this and so we got a coach against Brad which was really cool yeah, for yeah. us <laughs> and and it was Tony Tony called Tony called defense I called offense and I still didn't know what I was doing I really didn't you know but but, but, Brad, again, but I want to tell you something I want to tell you something though Tony <laughs> Great time our though. kids, we did have a great time, and, and our kids that we had, we had the Bobby Deck, Thuman, uh, Wolf, oh, group, yeah. uh, Gilfillan, uh, 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 Shore, uh, Andy Gilfillan, all, 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 yeah, all know, those guys. Um, and who was who was the kid? Uh, um, Chad Lap. Well, we had Chad Lap, who was just, just a monster. And Andy, Andy, Andy didn't know. You know, Andy was a good football player, and he's a great kid, but he didn't know that you're supposed to stop at the whistle. Who's that? Uh, uh, Gilfillan. Oh yeah, Andrew Gilfillan. And, yeah. Andrew Gilfillan, and he and he. Was was a, a strong <laughs> kid and he would just you know he'd run up to a tackle and he'd just absolutely unleash a wrath you know Chad Lapp's already got the guy lying around you yeah. know and Andy would break away from his guys and just it was like a it. bowling I, ball yeah. <laughs> I, t- I tell you what my, Bobby Deck Rob Thuman uh, always special place in my heart they come to the golf outings oh, yeah. every year Yeah, just yeah. great Bobby Deck was a hell of a runner. very well um, my, uh, my yeah. son plays football for McNick right? and, and, and McNick in the in the state quarterfinals just played um, Clinton Massey and my son Bobby as a senior was on was you know walking out warming up and everything and and, and the game ended um, we lost by a foot and, I remember uh, that yeah and it was <laughs> I mean Pierce Taylor did everything he could Ty Schneider did everything he could and it was a foot short yeah. after the game and they're shaking hands and everything one of the Clinton Massey coaches grabs Bobby Wolf. aside and gives him a hug and he said are you Bobby Diana he says yes he goes is your dad Tony he goes yes he goes he coached me all four years in high school how about that and cool. then he came over and you know we Saw had you. a great conversation and I you know I got to get, you talk about a stand up and you want to talk about a stand up guy yeah. Barry yeah. was incredible yeah. incredible yeah. guy he's just, just a great guy we and we kind of reconnected after you know after 30 years yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool wow. so, yeah. so let's I'm going to go back to you and your playing days so you get done playing was there any thoughts of playing in college was there any recruitment going on? There was no, there's zero recruit. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know, at the, time, right. at the time I was 5'10", so, I think I'm 5'8 now. So, <laughs> you know, so where'd you go to school? I ended up starting out at Youngstown State because I wanted to walk on and play football. And at the time they were Division Two. They weren't, okay. they weren't right. Division One yet. Yep. And Jimmy Tressel was their coach. Yep. Um, I was never on the field. I was never even given a uniform, but I was on that walk-on practice squad. And uh, I got my brains beat in because they were bigger than me. And, uh, yeah. you know, I decided after about two weeks <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll just go to school and then I'll transfer to UC okay yeah. <laughs> I'll finish out of here <laughs> um, but I was at Youngstown State for that first quarter and, and the reason why I chose Youngstown State um, that's where my whole family's from I was born in Youngstown oh. um, all my aunts and uncles are back in Youngstown I okay. lived with my grandmother who was five minutes from the university um, you know so I, I had people there I had family oh, right. there that's and great it was a very easy transition yeah. for me you know um, and my grandmother treated me like a king man she made sure 
sure. I was, I was <laughs> up sure. and I had to get the football. I was up and I had to get to work. I was up and I had to get to school. Is your yeah. homework finished? And, you know, the whole works. I mean, she was, yeah. I would probably have been a better student in college if I was still running around with my grandma. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I came Wouldn't down here, yeah. that was bad. When I came down here, I had Moose. <laughs> and I, had Corbett, Moose. I had Andrews yeah. and I had Corbett. Corbett. Yeah. 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 I had all those guys. Kissinger <laughs> and yeah. Brian Larson. Yeah. Well, let's get on to some more important topics here. Exactly. Let's, let's talk about the glory days, as Bruce Springsteen would say, about uh, Blarney Stone soft. Oh, gee. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Yes. One of my greatest memories. I <laughs> just get a base hit. Right? Is, one, is, one of the rare times. Hold on. Can this, can this go on camera? <laughs> this story? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah. This is a clean one. All right. All right. This is one of the, one of the few clean ones. Um, just, just got a base hit, and I think we're playing down at, in Milford River. River uh, uh, Expressway. 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 Yeah. All right. And so, you know, and this was when you guys were obviously much younger, and I was one of the older guys on the team. And I think maybe Boomer was hitting behind me. Why the hell you would put <laughs> Boomer hitting Oh, man. Me? Watch and out. He drives one to, to right center field fence over everybody's head. And I'm going first to third. I don't care what happens. I'm going first to third. <laughs> and I run around second base, and I get right about where the shortstop is, and I think the bullet hit me in the right oh. thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden it was just like fun. down goes Tony <laughs> goes Tony it was like the I mean you oh. know he's heard that yeah he pulled a hamstring you should have seen the sniper come out boy yeah. it was a shot you know and I went down I'm about three quarters of the way past the shortstop I'm yeah. like four feet still from, from third base yeah. the ball comes in they tag me on the head and they yeah. drag me off the field oh, <laughs> oh my gosh well I'm I, still going like this I, I mean it's just incredible to think of like the late 80s and the, and the mid 90s is how popular softball was oh, yeah, and how huge. much fun we had playing. Oh, had a just, a ble- just a <laughs> absolute great time. I God. mean, the, the whole the whole Metro tournament, but but like you brought up before we went on air, Muncie. Muncie. That Muncie was, was one of the crazy. best best oh. times I've ever had in my life in About softball because 20 stories this, so, so you have you have Steve. Four you can tell. So, <laughs> we, had, so we got <laughs> us and then we got Moose and we got Ty Burdick. Ty Burdick. You know, yeah. we got uh, just uh, Tommy Benassi, yeah. Boomer. Yeah, Keith Farrar. Keith Keith Farrar. Farrar. Ken yeah. Reynolds. Ken Reynolds. Yeah. Was just, just and, and, and we didn't expect to do anything, and we went to the championship. Dave Woolprice. Dave Wool- yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dave Woolprice. And we went to the championship, and we got double dipped. We were we went through the whole thing undefeated and got double dipped. And got double well, dipped. Well, part of it, I think, was we were hungry. We were drunk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but there was a, a home run limit or something, and yes. Todd it kept yes. just hitting them. Driving them out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were playing maybe the semifinals or something like this, and we're up on this team by like 20. Yeah. Right? And, and Burdick looks over at Moose and says, uh, can I? I do it yes and I Moose remember is like, Moose is like ahead. unleash your wrath what yeah. the hell and oh. he hit this softball um, it would have been out of any baseball park in yeah. center field uh, and it, remember, cleared remember the house. About it, it cleared it cleared the, uh, the the scoreboard in dead center field yeah. and I think it was still that. climbing yeah. and there was like trees behind the scoreboard uh-huh. and it went through the trees oh my gosh. like it, they were nothing obviously 80% air yeah. and it went through the trees like it was nothing I don't know if it ever came down or where it landed yeah. but yeah. he just sat there he just yeah. giggled. He giggled and just turned around and walked. Yeah. And that was that was E. That was that was that was back, was, was e, back yeah. but that was back in the day when it was a lot different. Oh, it was yeah. a lot. Oh, and yeah. That, that's when Ty first started playing softball. Was right. us? Was us? His right. first team he ever played with was was us. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously everybody saw him, and then you know Moose then played they, with us just because then, you know Moose was kind of just starting to play a little bit, but he wanted to play with all of us. And then obviously the, those guys yeah. went up and played. But I tell you guys, it was probably the, that time playing softball was. The best. Remember, we had my brother in law Bobby yes. come play yeah. and Milk, Milk Pappas. Yeah. Pappas. Yes. Did, did Milk Pappas play no, for it was, uh, third base? No, it was, uh, you're thinking of Cardinus or whatever his name is. We played against them. We didn't play. Okay. No, we, did, we didn't. about Skeeter Barnes? No. <laughs> no, but we, we had some, we had some just great, great oh, tournaments, awesome great team. times. And and this, this is the one that I had to bring up. I told Moose I was going to bring this up. What's that? Uh, Tony Monty. Diana coaching third base. And guys are running, and Tony would put up the stop sign, but he put his head 
I'd like to see go. Oh yes, I remember. Ready? He'd always go like that. His hand. I remember this. He would always put his hands like this, but yeah. his hand would be down like oh. that. <laughs> yeah, put on the brakes, bro. Yeah. But, but we had so much fun. I mean, obviously winning the city tournament, oh, and, then, my God. and yeah. then going on to Chicago and awesome. playing. Yeah, that, that was, was just uh, was blast. just probably probably one of the best times ever. I think. Who Mac was a moose. Uh, probably all of us, man. You, sm- I think it might have been. I moose. think he hit a triple, and he comes up. Yes, and you did. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right across the face. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, I can't breathe and you're doing that. Okay. <laughs> that was that was the good old days. But so uh, excited. I got another one here that I'm gonna go ahead and bring up since we're bringing up all these uh, back uh, these memories. But uh, okay. the time that you came over our house, uh, I think it was Gobbler Bowl, and you Which were told one? to bring told to bring. You said, "Should I bring any uh, alcoholic beverages?" My brother said, "No." And you went to the refrigerator and opened the refrigerator for the first time to see Big Guy's concoction that he had in there. And Moose said, "Your face." was priceless I, I opened up the refrigerator it was like it was, uh, I'm sorry all, all of us Catholics but it was like a Jesus <laughs> um, I've never seen I'm home. I, it was uh, you know <laughs> You know, you know, our, our dads always told us, you know, you need to take a, you need to take a, uh, a trip to every brewery in the country, <laughs> just so you can, just so you get the mindset right. to, to say that you can't drink beer faster than they make it. Yeah. Right? I opened up that refrigerator and it got this glow to it. Yeah. <laughs> every single can was perfectly stacked <laughs> with the label out, and I bet there were nine high. I don't think there were any oh. racks in there. I no, think there they wasn't. Were, there wasn't I think any they racks. Were, they were oh, stacked really? from the bottom yeah. up. There were no yep, racks. No and racks. They were stacked Gosh. from the bottom up, and it that refrigerator must have been must have been glued to the floor because <laughs> yep. it didn't shake. Because yeah. if so, all that would come come yeah. tumbling down. And I mean, I opened that thing up, and it was just like uh, yeah. I might never. <laughs> leave. Moose told me, he said your face. You said your face is priceless. You're like, <laughs> you just you wouldn't leave. move. You're like, that what was pretty party, good. What party was it that I slept on the di- on the living room floor, and your what, sister had to br- bring me aspirin? Oh, uh, that that was probably the big party. That, that might have been the big party with the brick through the window. <laughs> May have been. I'll say, I'll there, there, was, there was multiple times we had parties like I, that. I was I was done. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm sleeping on the floor, and I, I think your brother put towels around me for a good reason. <laughs> oh, those are some... I, I woke up, and your sister's standing over me going, are you still breathing? I'm going, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. And I said, I got a headache. I said, I said, is there any way you can bring me aspirin? And she brought, she comes, I'll be right back, and she hands me two aspirin, and I put them on my forehead. I said, <laughs> I said, Teresa, they're not working. <laughs> so they're just not working. Oh god! Because well, you got you got swallowed. <laughs> that, that might be an issue. Yeah, be a real oh, big issue. Oh man, yeah. those were the great great times. We man. would walk around graduation party, your brother's graduation yep. party. We were your dad. We, we we woke up the next morning, and, and you know neither one of us could see, let alone walk. Um, right. He's like, you guys got to start cleaning up, and it's like ten o'clock in the morning. We went to bed at eight. Right. You know, yeah. so we went to bed. He goes, you guys. You guys is uh, you know so we we got all the garbage cans taken care of and we got everything closed up and big guy looks at us and said, "Did you get the mailboxes?" What the what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, you know, and you look, you look at and, mail. and you don't say that to big guy. You just turn around and go check the mailboxes. Yeah, I bet we pulled 10, 10 cans out of the mailboxes. <laughs> out of mailboxes at, up and down the street. That's oh totally my god! Yeah, every that every time funny. we open a mailbox, Lori There's Campbell. A, I think there were five in Lori Campbell's. Really? Mailbox. I think Dave Peters had like two Dave Peters. Peters. Yeah. Jimmy Peters. Bell. I think Jimmy Bell had a whole twelve pack. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, you just sit there and you you're going mailboxes. You just turn around and you start walking down. Funny. The street and all of a sudden we're dragging this garbage bag full of beer cans we're pulling out of the neighbor's mailboxes. Oh, that is fantastic. So, well, well, Tony, let's let's talk about your family and, and uh, your wife went to Anderson, right? Yes, Stacy and Stacy Wilster. Just a great year person. after us, eighty four. Good lord, she's she's awesome. Oh, she's a rock. And she's, and she's our stud. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Tell us about your wife and, and your family. Um, my boys are very intelligent boys. I have to give them that. They're very very intelligent. I guess three boys. Mikey is a, is a school teacher in Charleston, South Carolina. Nice. Timmy just graduated from Ohio University and in, uh, in, in business and in, in uh, construction management and, and marketing and finance, I believe. And then Bobby just graduated from McNick and he's going to Ohio University. You see all three boys at Ohio University and they're, they're all very intelligent people. And, and that's in spite of me because my wife is, <laughs> my wife is a, is a highly intelligent person. And, um, you know, they, they, she, she did a great job raising our 
our kids. Yeah. Because, oh yeah. You know, Stacy's yeah, awesome. Dan, Stacey's awesome. Yep. She's she's a stud. She's she's a rock. And uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about her. Sure. Yeah. How much I love her. Yeah. Yeah. She she's she's awesome. But you know, we have three great kids because you know, Stacy Stacy wasn't easy on any of them. You know, I mean, you always heard me say when when one of the boys got hit by a pitch, you know, get up, put some dirt on it. Well, she'd be saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. She would never get on the field and say, "Is he hurt?" You know, right. Yeah. Right. Get up, and get the first base. <laughs> yeah. You know, something like that. So yeah. She um, she was all she's a, she's a stud. She's, yeah. she's the glue that holds the family. You know, and then then my immediate family. You know, you have six Dianas that went through school. Yep. Um, my brother Rick's wife, Sherry Corbett, went through school. So Randy Corbett's right. sister married my brother. Okay. Um, you have. Um, their three daughters went to Anderson, so there, you know there's three more Dianas that went to Anderson. My brother Joe's two went to Anderson. Um, I mean, we have we have kid we had we had a long line of Dianas. Sure, yeah. Dianas going through Anderson. Now yep. when we get together, there's like 40 of us. Oh That's my crazy. gosh! And my dad looks at me and says, "Where did all these people come from?" I'm like, "You started it." Yeah. Well, you know? your, <laughs> your mom and dad. Your mom and dad look great. Yeah. You. Your mom and dad look Thank great. Dad'll, dad'll be 84 and my. Be 83. How about they that? Just, they look, they they look just, awesome. That's yeah, great. They, they're just, you know, they're just, you know, my dad finally retired at 80. That's you know, what Jimmy's been said, retired yeah. for three or four yeah. years. He just, he said, you know what, I'm, I'm done. And, and were they still uh, around? Like, like Bobby just finished playing, right? Was, oh yeah, we got great pictures of Bobby. You know, they were at they were at football games watching Bobby. Um, I have a, a niece, Caroline, at, at Turpin. Uh, Johnny's daughter yeah. is okay. at Turpin, yeah. and you know they go and watch. They, she she used to play. Um, lacrosse and they would go watch her games but that's awesome you know when bobby graduated we were just with him on sunday you know yeah. for the graduation so we got bobby who's 6'2 200 and i don't know now he's about 2 215 he yeah. played about 235 and my parents at you know my dad on a good day's 5'4 <laughs> you know my mom's yeah. barely yeah. in the picture yeah. because yeah. you know because <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah so yeah um but you could see the smile on their face because they just love their grandchildren that's they awesome oh, yeah. just adore. And, and bobby had a great year bobby had a very good year um he got an award for every section of football in high school in the state of ohio you can get did all, he get all state he got all state that's he awesome. Got, awesome he got all league all city all southwest region all southwest ohio coaches um all state that's uh, awesome well yeah. deserved i'm sure yeah so he was they had a he phenomenal was, year yeah had a great year they had a great year at mcnick so <laughs> Well, what didn't did, were you part of the booster? What were you part of? You did something at McNick. Were you the boosters for McNick? Because I, I saw a, you on TV. Yeah, well, uh, that was different. I was the booster president at McNick for four years, and all those guys that I played against, you know, yeah. I would always tell them, "Now you got a redskin in charge of." <laughs> I said, yes, I said, you may have beat us in football. Right. <laughs> you may have beat us in football all four years, but I'm in charge of your business. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, That's awesome. That's and they're funny. like, you know, hey, Diana, you look good in green. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, I, and you know, and I have a great relationship with all those McNick guys. But I was the booster president for four years. Um, but what we do at McNick is we have a big tailgate at home. Well, we tailgate anywhere we can at any point in time. You yeah. know, if it's snowing, we'll tailgate. Um, we we have a big tailgate, and um, I my Bobby's senior year, I was in charge of the tailgate. We kind of pass it off to a senior dad. Okay. Stacy was the senior mom, and he kind of worked with the coach, making sure all the announcements got out and what's, yep. what what's going on. Um, I, I took care of the tailgates, and all I did was send one email a week, and basically the email said. This is who we have. This is where we're gonna. I mean, it, it was. Yeah. It was really. And and you know. Do home and away or just home? Home and away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. To be honest with you. Well, some some like schools said, don't let it, you do if, the. If it was the first snow of the season, we tailgated at McNeck, so yeah. it was kind of fun. Yeah. But yeah, um, um, we had one game. It was a skyline game of the week. Um, I think McNick was playing Highlands okay. uh, oh, from yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. And uh, Highlands was expected to win, and McNick, McNick beat them. Yes. I mean, McNick kind of, I wouldn't say bullied them on the field, but McNick handled them really right. well. Before the game, um, who was a Dan, Dan man and... Uh, Oh, and Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy Roush, Jeremy Roush, yeah, nineteen, nineteen. Dan yeah. come come in, and 
um, for, for the Skyline Game of the Week. And the AD, Drew Schmidt, drops him off and introduces him to me and says, this is Tony Diana. He's the head of the tailgate. And, and you know, he said, and they said, tell me a little bit about the tailgate. And I said, you know, all I do is tell everybody where we're going to be. And, and that's it. Um, it's up. People bring whatever they want. And he's like, what are you guys cooking around here? I said, we got Italian sausage down there. We got meatball hoagies up here. We got pizzas down here. We have, you know, just all kinds of just, I mean. Big time. Hundreds right. of people. Yeah. Lined up at the, the lower parking lot at McNick. I've got, I've got, I actually went up and took pictures of it up high so I can actually see how many people were there. And they're tense up you know right and just people having a great time wow so you know they started walking around and everything and, and the whole works by themselves and then they started their broadcast and they were talking about you know one of the best tailgates that they have ever been to and they come walking down and I'm, I got my back to them I don't even hear them or anything like that I'm talking to my mom and dad and I'm behind my car and maybe had a road pop and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so all of a sudden I hear Tony D and I'm like who the hell is that so all of a sudden I turn around and I see those guys as I'm shoving a sausage pepper sandwich <laughs> oh, perfect oh, yeah you know, perfect put it down and I come walking over, and, and they they introduce me as Tailgate Tony, <laughs> <laughs> Father Scalf at at Tom or at, at McNick, the priest at McNick, still calls me Tailgate Tony. Tailgate, Tailgate Tony. Tony. My wife and one of the other mothers made me a black shirt just like this, big huge McNick football yeah. that says Tailgate Tony. That is See, hilarious. you're always gonna you're always gonna be uh, Dago, Dago in mind, Dago, Dago in mind. Yeah. That's but right. but yeah, I was Tailgate Tony, and there was a little blip on on Channel Nine about it and all that was really cool but I, saw we, that. I would I mean I, it didn't matter where we were it didn't matter if it was rainy if it was freezing cold or anything like yeah. that um, I would send out one email and it basically said here we go again and put the you know we're three and oh we're five and oh we're right. and this is who we're playing and you know yeah. go rockets and the whole works but I was put in there you know a map of where I where the flag was and I would always tell everybody just look for the flag that's awesome and I had a flag that was on the car that was 16 feet up in the air and it was a big McNick flag so they knew if the flag's up tailgates on oh, yeah. Let's go. that's awesome you know and uh, and um, you know I passed the flag on the, the flag gets gets uh, yeah. Mark Dietz Mark Dietz oh, is, yeah. is the flag, no the flag Mark bearer Dietz. Yeah. yeah Mark Dietz his son Jay is a good football player and uh, Mark Dietz is the flag bearer for okay for, well, that's for good that's, that's awesome <laughs> you know so yeah so, so um, talk, I know one thing I wanted to get into before we get into your memories here is uh, talk I, I know that don't you guys still do the uh, I talked to Juan about it a little bit about that golf outing you guys do with all the group of guys you guys still do that yeah we talk do. a little bit about that we do we do it every other we do it every other like December um, as much as you know we can we have about 20 guys 24 guys that are in the pool kind of and you know Randy Corbett obviously is the one who sets it up and another friend of ours Jim Lonza who we met at UC so you know they they're the two that really kind of set the whole thing up and all he does is send out an email and say who's in this is the dates yeah. this is where we're going who's in and we we definitely every year get 16 guys wow that's great you know, we get 16 guys we go away every Every other December, every other year, okay. um, you know, and we just have four days of just fun. Yeah, you know, just absolute blast. We're playing euchre, we're golfing, we're you know, whatever. I mean, it was just a it's just awesome. a great time. And you know, when you leave there, you feel so much better that you got to hang out with those guys. Absolutely. You know, and that you and it and it's a mix between the guys that that we were with UC and, and the guys at yep. Anderson, and it just became a really good group. And That's you know, we have this long, long running text. Um, it's lasted, I don't know how long the phone's been out. I mean, we have this long running text for about, the, especially about the last five or six years, you know, for somebody's birthday, you know, happy birthday, right, so-and-so, right. and, so, and then everybody else joins sure. in and then, you know, happy anniversary or, you know, whatever. So, I mean, we stay close that way. That's the way we stay close. And, you know, some of the guys, especially the Anderson, yeah, you might know is, uh, you know, there's me and, and Corbett is the, Corbett's the glue that holds everybody 
everybody together yeah. in every situation. Um, Mike Wan, yeah. Brian Larson, uh, Terry, Terry, Terry Brennan. Terry Brennan yeah. um, you know, Mike Andrews. I was say, you know, Andrews. we. I mean, we just we just have a great time. That's, that's awesome. That's great. I'm so sure cool. I'm missing. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm missing somebody out, but I, nah, that's yeah. pretty cool. But it's nah, a great. It's pretty. an absolutely great time. I, I can't even imagine the 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 stories on that thing. But uh, let, let's get it. Let's try to wrap this up. But let's sure. get into uh, some memories here. What's your? Uh, let's go into your favorite high school memory, maybe college, or maybe favorite teacher coach. Let's let's hit your favorite high school memory. Oh, there'd be, be there'd be a couple of them. Number one is anything that happened at Bob Fitzpatrick's farm. <laughs> so who else said that? That is so funny. Because whatever that. happened, I mean, uh, we had situations. We had situations where we had huge. Oh, it was Mike Wan. We had Mike huge, Wan said that. We no, had, he did say that. Yeah. yeah, we had huge bonfires out there, and it was just you know we were like living like the Lord of the Flies. You know, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're, like, we're living. We're just grungy and smelly and yeah. everything else for three days, and and it was it was it was hard on your liver and, and everything else. Yeah. You know, and it'd be at mid, middle of the night, and you know we had we we were I had I our family had a van, and I would take the van out there, and the van had this big kind of bed type thing in back, um, and I we also had a huge tent. It you know we were, we were out there one night, and then all of a sudden one of the kids wakes up screaming it's a freaking alien it's et and there's a shadow on one of the windows that looks like there's an alien oh well, no <laughs> 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 you know, yeah yeah i mean alcohol a little yeah, bit. yeah. looking yeah. cross-eyed <laughs> but i mean, it, I mean that's it was, funny it you was said an it. absolute blast probably yeah. the other memory is anytime i had a funnel later in my hand um we were at we were at mike Wands. <laughs> I know that sounds wrong. Anytime. <laughs> we're, we're at Mike Wan's house one time, and, and Ken Reynolds' family yeah. moved up the street from them, not not far, and um, Fox Trail Farms yep. in Asbury. So we would send somebody up in the bushes, and you know they would they would scream as a car was getting close. We would launch we would launch a funnelator, you know we'd launch a water balloon, you know nine hundred yards up the street, oh my gosh. And, you know splash them on the car and everything like that. Well, no cars were coming by one night, and I think it, I think we may have sent Brian Larson or or um, or uh, uh, Montanus. Um, Mike Montana's up there and he's in the bushes and nobody's coming, nobody's coming. Like, give me one. Thump. And also you hear that thing go thump, 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 thump. <laughs> You son of a <laughs> <laughs> um, Janet Dreyer lived across the street from from Skyline on Beachmont, um, on what is that, Patterson? Yeah. yeah. And she had this really tight backyard that we could sneak back there. And uh, Marathon Gas Station is right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Skyline's right here. Well, we're launching water balloons over Beachmont oh, into, no, into the Skyline parking lot. Oh, no. And all of a sudden, we just unleashed this one, and it just splatters on a Hamilton County Sheriff's hood. <laughs> and immediately, that light went thunk. So <laughs> yeah. many kids laying flat on the ground. Oh. Yeah. Yes. We never did anything like that. No. We didn't do anything. We like were that. angels. Yeah. No, we were. We were. <laughs> Anytime we had a funnelator in our hands, and it, the funnelator, it definitely, definitely Bob Fitzpatrick's farm. Yeah, that's awesome. So, do you have anything college? College memories, probably the same thing. <laughs> I don't remember much. From that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot of fun. It was just it was, college was a lot of fun. Yeah, do you have any, what about? Give me your favorite teacher. Any any favorite teacher um, or coach? Or? I had I had a couple. You know, definitely I would have to say Andy Wolf because he challenged you every day. Yeah, Andy Wolf taught you how to be taught a lot of common sense, um, and he challenged you every day. And, and he painted. I don't know. He was very colorful in the way he taught history. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge history yep. buff. I love history. I love the, you know the Constitution and, and everything about it. So I'm a big history buff. And then John Stowe was was government, yep. and I didn't know how corrupt government was until John <laughs> Stowe started talking. Um, and that and was, that back was back then. in that was back in the, in the early yeah. 80s. Yeah. Um, definitely Carl Seymour. Carl oh, Seymour. There you go. Yeah, Carl Seymour would challenge just challenge you, um, and 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 not in a bad way, but just to make you know that you're capable of doing anything so it was probably carl seymour was was That's the, awesome. those you know those yep. two those three wow uh, and that was at the end of his career that was pretty close to the end yep. of his career yeah because he had coached football and, and had a heart attack right yeah yep. oh he, he was a phenomenal football coach and that and i and i have to attribute him because to some of my playing days because you know I, w I was dating his daughter for for a couple years i remember school, that julie, julie and, yeah. uh, you know me and him would sit and talk football no kidding and he would and he would i mean he taught me he yeah. taught me a 
lot of little things wow. that I didn't know at the that, time. So Carl Seymour. That's great. Wow, that is, that's incredible. Just fun. We had a great time with, with, yeah. with that, our grouping. That's, that's awesome. Huge. Now, we appreciate everybody listening to the Waltons here. Next week, we're going to have John Boy on here. Uh, <laughs> since we've had Johnny on here. Johnny we'll on here. Rick. We've had Jimmy. We've had Tony. we got to get Maria on and here. And we'll just do the play the little theme of tonight. And so we'll go say, night, John Boy. And night, John. Sue Ellen. Yeah. Yeah. You know. This week in some of the states. This week yeah. in some of the states. is exactly. You it's just need to work on your ridiculous. side. Just work on your side. Work on your side. Uh, well, okay. You, you know were in Fox Chapel, right? You're no, right. it's on off Forest Road in Brittany Acres. That's right, Brittany Acres, not yeah. Fox Chapel. You're so, on the corner. So, yeah. You're so, on the corner. So you're over there with Mark Lobring and the Coronas. Yep. And uh, Corona, yeah. Lori, Lori Jeffers. And the Geysers. And, and, Geysers yep, and the Reinhardts. Mm -hmm. The Lyman Stalls. Lyman Stalls, Stalls right there. Yep. Yeah. All of those. Sky Lab. So, I mean, you, you, got, you got potential, Steve. Yeah, just just working. Just, oh, you got to you know, do something. I mean, uh, just, uh, what's his name? Was a good soccer player. Um, or one of them was a good soccer player. Who? I think we played uh, Lyman Stall. Todd was good. Todd, Todd was good. Yeah, Todd was quick. Player. Yeah, he was because we played. I think he may have been on that team with Frank Brandy and. I bet he was. Yeah, yeah. you know, he graduated in '82. Yeah, yeah. 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 to go back, I'd yeah. love to go back to those days again. I'd like you to see some film with some of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See me hit my home run at that song. Jeez, uh, <laughs> this guy's bragging about uh, a D League home run. Well, it's in a paper. Hey, you know, <laughs> it's in a paper. It's, it's legit. A, it's, it's legit. A home, it's a home in that, uh, in that home. cotton uniform. In my cotton uniform, we were the Tigers. <laughs> Too, Tony. We're the Tigers. Yeah, yeah. we're the you Tigers too. Are. Champs. A little more legit on a team like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had Kogan as our coach. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we were, yeah, we were, we were not good. Yeah, we no, were that's not good. good. <laughs> that's fine. Well, Tony, we really appreciate you taking the time to join yeah, us. It's all, always awesome, no matter whether we're doing this podcast or we get together anywhere yeah. we're at. We always have a great time. And we can and go on for hours. We, we could. could go on could. for hours, we could. And hours and hours. A yeah. lot, a lot oh. more uh, X-rated um, oh, yeah, stories. <laughs> that we can we can throw out stuff probably. the FCC couldn't. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. it doesn't matter. That'd be great. They ban us because of us. That'd be great. So no, but Tony appreciates. So we're gonna oh, go ahead. And, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. So here for uh, Steve Ellis, Dan Evers, and Tony Diana. You've been listening to this week in Anderson. We'll catch you next week.